First of all, thank you very much for the organizers and for the possibility to present here. Uh, my name is Norbert Fargo, and on behalf of my colleagues, I will be speaking now. The purpose of this presentation is dual. Firstly, we would like to share some preliminary results about the recently excavated epipaleolithic site of Pali Dombok. Secondly, we would like to give a brief introduction to the most neglected period of the Hungarian archaeology. Having the shortest and most periodical history of research, and with only a handful of sites, the inner territories of the Carpathian Basin are unfortunately scarcely known, and not just for the international Mesolithic research. The period between the late glacial maximum and the dawn of the Holocene witnessed several climatic fluctuations, but generally the temperature and the precipitation increased together. The inner part of the Carpathian Basin gradually showed the same characteristics as we knew it until the end of the 19th century. As it is shown on the, map on, on the map on the left, the larger part of the Great Hungarian Plain could have been described as a wetland defined by the Danube, the Tisza, and several other smaller rivers and streams. Together with the encounter of the three main climatic belt, the continental, the Atlantic, and the sub-Mediterranean, a very diversified environment came into being. Thus, we should imagine a very patchy flora and fauna, both on micro and macro levels. Even nowadays, the general climatic description of the whole country cannot be conducted according to the global climatic classes. The definition is different from region to region, and it is based on different weather and moisture subdivisions. The question of the human adaptation to these conditions is a crucial one. In archaeological terms, whether the former epigravitian cultures continued to live on, or they gave place to a self tardigravitian tradition. Nevertheless, this shift in the hunting strategies reflected in the archaeological material by the emergence of the geometrical microliths. So the influence of the Western tankle complex, Beuronian, Softerian, cannot be disregarded. Concerning the wider early Mesolithic context in Europe, it is interesting that the intersection of the large cultural complexes situated just right, in, right inside the Carpathian Basin, forming a very patchy general picture in archaeological sense also. The main problem is that the Middle Danube region showed insignificant amount of archaeological sites and atypical tool types until the middle of the 20th century, which concluded the introduction of agriculture and the theory of Mesolithic hiatus. From the 1990s, new sites were localized either in the Yashag region or in Transdanubia, which revised the latter idea why the former term became, became outdated by moving its sites and finds into chronological different horizons. Beginning with South and Transdanubia, the first site to mention is Sexart Polang. It was located during the construction of Shio Dam in 1957. The excavation was conducted by Laszlo Vertes, who observed six hearts on 60 square meter surface. The finds were situated in a loose layer dated to the Ranger Dryas, which was deposited on the lowest sand terrace of the Danube. According to the typology of the stone tools, Vertes accepted this chronological frame, positioning the lifetime of the settlement around 10,000 BC. The assemblage of Sexar Palang belonged to the Epigravitian cultural entity with some Azilio Tardanesian components. However, this typological point of view went through a revision just recently with a detailed technological analysis. According to the revision, an intensive bipolar technology was applied during the exploitation of the cores. Most of the times, the burins defined by Vertes in the 1960s seemed to be only unintentional technological byproducts. Concerning the utilized raw materials, 70% are made of radiorites from different origins, Bakoy Mountains, Mecek Mountains, Croatia, the rest are limnosilicites, Cherhat Mountains, Baltic Erotic Flint and Volhynian Flint. At Sexart Polank, Laszlo Virtas tried his best from the means at his disposal in the 1950s. The chronology was reinforced by molecological, anthropological and radiocarbon results, which were published also. According to the data, the human activity can be dated to a cooler and drier period before the beginning of the Holocene, which witnessed the last period of modest less accumulation since the last glacial maximum younger Dreyas again. The vegetation can be reconstructed as a forest steppe and one with marshland and deciduous forest components, while in the Molokko fauna cool tolerant and thermophilus species were both present. The small amount of animal remains belonged to bison, deer and beaver, while fish bones of pikes and cyprins were collected also. The site of Södliget Vats was found during dam reconstruction works on the center of the Danube in 1954, at 200 meters distance away from the first spot, and a decade later, another settlement spot was excavated. This time, some fed settlement features, two hearts, and the ground plan of a habitation unit came to light. 
Unfortunately, this letter cannot be revised anymore, but according to the MA thesis of David Krauss, the two industries represent two different chronological phases. <coughs> The finds of Sördliget were analyzed from mainly a typological aspect. The relative absence of the geometric microids and the high number of plague-based tools signifies these assemblages, altogether having a general epigravetian Tardenoisian impression. There are no points, no burins, and no signs of microburin technique. The raw material on which these equipment were made of is mainly limnic site from the nearby Cherhat Mountains. The closest parallels of the rectangular from ground plans can be found at Lepenskivir near the Iron Gate. Unfortunately, the excavation of Södliget is lack of any detailed polyenvironmental analysis of radiocarbon dating, but according to Miklos Gábori, the chipped stones were situated just at the edge of the Holocene soil and the yellow sand layer below. The only, only archaeological finds from the site is some badly preserved teeth of roe deer. The geomorphological analysis of the nearby Santander Island was conducted independently from the excavation 50 years later, but it may, be, may provide some clues about the environment in the early Holocene. In the region of the northern Arfold, the excavations of Yazberen 1 and Yaztelek 1 were parts of a larger systematic project of the amateur collector Gyula Kerigyarto and archaeologist Robert Curtis. They localized many new sites with fieldworks along the meanders and dead arms of Zajva and Tarna rivers. Two chronological phases were delineated in the frame of North Alfred Mesolithic industry, an older one, Yazberény, and a younger one, Yaztelek. The finds of the region of Yazság were analyzed only from a typological view. According to this, the sites were marked with back points, mostly with arched retouch, shouldered and stofterian points were also noted, geometric microlits like crescents, isoceles, and scalene triangles ruled the assemblages with the utilization of microburn technique. Curtis highlighted the connections with the Western Softerian Technocomplex instead of the Southern Balkanic Tardigravetian groups. The region of Yashag witnessed the thorough paleoecological analysis. According to this, the whole surroundings of the sites were reconstructed with complex methods. Pollen analysis revealed that the human settlement was placed di directly in the gallery woods with oak, elm, willow, maple, and with hazel at the shrub level. At the close vicinity, both woodland and forest steppe were accessible for the hunters, who supposedly took advantage of the varied wild game fauna. The site, which is lying in northern Transdanubia, was found during rescue excavation works connected to gravel and sand quarrying of the reconstruction of M86 motorway in 2014. It is situated on a sand dune in the flood plains of Raba River, one kilometer south from Pali. According to the location of the first finds, the excavation took place on the southern slope of the newly opened quarry pit in two phases, 2014 and 2015. It covered 60 square meters on which a large part, larger part of a dense occupation spot came to light. The finds were situated in one cultural horizon in a dark gray polio soil layer, which was enclosed from above and below by a bluish grayish yellow brown clay silt. Below this compact strata, a Pleistocene gravel layer could have been found with the thickness of some 10 meters. Apart from a, from a moderately pigmented dark circular spot, there were no habitation units recorded. According to our first results, only 2% of the complete material proved to be former tool. The most numerous type is end scraper made on flake with 28 pieces. The triangles are second one with 16 pieces, but they are not standardized. Only one scalene came to light. Next group is, a, is the retouched blades, bladelets, which are mostly complete pieces. Sigments. Uh, could have been found also, but they are not standardized either. We have only one point, which are typically retouched on both sides. It's remarkable that there were not one single trapeze in the assemblage. At Pali Dombok, we took advantage of the rare occasion to analyze a habitation spot like this. We used geomorphological and sedimentological methods to fully understand the stratigraphy. We took samples for pollen analysis, we have charcoal samples for anthropological and radiocarbon analysis, and we have samples for OSL dating. Unfortunately, not all the results are available except the OSL dating and the pollen analysis. The latter suggested a temporary drying condition of the environment with the complete absence of pollens. The former Palo environmental investigation at Mezulak, some 20 kilometers away from our site, should suggest a mixed birch pine colliery forest with forest step step at higher elevations. The general conclusion, conclusion about the microscale environment of the epipaleolithic Mesolithic settlements may shed some light why there are so few of them in the territory of Hungary. However, it may help to localize more with specific and aimed reconnaissance in the future. 
All of them are located direct, directly in the flume plains or on moderated sand elevations, having advantage of the close proximity both of the wetland, gallery forest, and forest steppe. Unfortunately, or fortunately, these zones fall out of the scope of ordinary archaeological and economical interests. <clears throat> According to the situation of the final Paleolithic and Mesolithic in the Carpathian Basin on a larger scale, a very diversified picture can be drawn. In the Middle Danube region, every macro region shows a different vegetation history, which follows different paces. The different attributes of the aforementioned sites cannot be paralleled with climatic reasons directly, but their correlation may deserve more attention in the future. And to emphasize this last thought, we borrowed a caricature of Jean-Georges Rosoy from the publication of Jean-Georges Rosoy, which is saying, they are upsetting the weather with their flint chipping experiments. This opinion has as much scientific value as saying that changes in environment are these the causes of changes in industries. So we have to take, account, take into account the cultural aspects as well. And thank you for your attention. <clears throat>